What's up? Welcome to my channel. I'm Tatami and I talk about whatever the fuck I want to and today we are going to smoke the morning chop and talk about who the hell America is trying to make the face of this coronavirus melt down in these here ununified states of America. Let's do the chop first. I hope you got a morning chop too because we don't need it. Calm yourselves. Oh, I always forget the bowl it's really packed that's really marijuana yes i'm really a pothead you don't have to leave the comment so hard being a pothead and a mama Needed to go be a mom again, but that's okay. So, y'all, I was watching a show by Dr. Moon. Uh, I want to say her name is Dr. Moonby. It's the Dr. Moonby show. And um, she was talking about how um, black people in America have kind of become the face of this movement. She was noting, I think she noted vaccines, how it was kind of setting us up to be in a position to be the ones begging for the vaccine, demanding the vaccine. It was setting us up to also be in a place of vulnerability wherein they could, you know, be coming in, rounding some of us up, um, et cetera, et cetera. Basically, it, it's a case of blaming the black body and there's going to be serious legislature changes and societal changes even not even as deep but just societal changes that could occur and actively will occur already because of media that's been out there for the last week and so um i i was very i was i, I mean well first off we had already talked about uh, medical racism how you're you're bound to face this during even the best of times and so um, it's uh, no surprise to me that we're suffering the most when it comes to getting supplies, uh, to getting care. Um, and then further, this is exacerbated. Uh, they're, they're trying to blame the black body here. And when I say that, I'm referring to something I see in birth work all the time. And I saw it the very first time I saw it was when I first got pregnant and when you're black, when you're a black pregnant woman, they give you a sheet of paper that says these are the high risk factors. People who do this, people do the, who do this, black people. That's that's literally you're literally put on the list because you're black and no further explanation is given. There is nothing, no thought put into it. Your doctor believes it. That's how they explain it to you. It seems disrespectful. It seems unscientific. It feels like there should be some something put into this, <laughs> but they don't explain it at all. They just hand you this piece of paper and uh, that's that. And so it's a case of blaming the black body, right? Because you're not born with a predisposition to certain ailments, right? Most of, I mean, most of us, right? Most of the time, you're not born with a predisposition to even really get COVID necessarily. We're not, as a whole, as black people as a whole, we're not born broken. That's just not the way it is. A lot of these health problems that they're showing are things that are lifestyle based. Things like stress related to racism and poverty, um, you know, anti-blackness, things related to living in food deserts that we do not create, living in cities and environments that we do not own, we do not create, living, you know, they, them putting in uh, pollutants, we have environmental racism, their factories are built in our cities, their biggest polluting um you know, machines and uh, such buildings are put in our cities. When they have something, you know, toxic to bury, they get as close to our cities as they can. They stay far away from theirs. Um, that type of thing is environmental racism. It's another factor that impacts our health. <clears throat> 
We live in cities. This impacts our health. Uh, you know what I mean? So we get the, the large brunt of it. And then the further you have on top of that is that the majority of people who have these essential jobs that have to go out all the time are black and Latino people. It's brown people, black and brown people. Um, they're the ones who are going out. They're the ones who are put at risk. They're the ones who are being called to duty here. And um, in essence, it's something that we're expected to respect. So we're expected to respect it. That's what I think I said last. Sorry, I just went to the um, laundry. I don't know if you could hear the... Uh, alarm going off in the background, but it was annoying me. So anyways, we're expected to respect these answers, that it's our fault, it's our bodies. We're more prone somehow, even though Italians are like literally the super dead, right? Europe is going through a whole bunch of shit. White people here are going through a whole bunch of shit. And it's literally only because of like medical racism and systemic racism. And, um, Basically, I mean, I'm sure there are a lot of folks who are who are struggling out there who just didn't even show up to the hospital and might have died at, uh, of COVID, you know, at home. Um, they might, and I'm sure a good group of those people are black people. I did hear that a group of people, that it has risen in New York, how many people have died at home. Um, but at the same time, I mean... I don't think they're going to check those people, you know, to see if any of them were, um, you know, infected before they'd passed away. And if they just passed away at home, I think that a large group of those people is probably black people or going to be black people as this continues. And um, I want you to also look out for the fact that it's going to continue to affect us more. Why? Because um, they're saying like the farmers have their food rotting on the fields and shit. Um there's about to be food shortages is all that says to me food's about to get a little more expensive and that just leaves poor people disenfranchised people systemically oppressed people um, more out of the loop and you know we see it i think i've said I, i've seen these headlines i'm not sure how verified they are of like racism against africans in china during the pandemic which is really worrisome. And there's also been racism. Like, I mean, there's just been racism all through the house. And I mean, <laughs> it's just how it is here. I mean, people are being surprised and shocked, but most of us have been saying that this system has bro been broken this entire time. It's, it's not been functioning this entire time. Um, but I don't want us to be accepting this narrative that we are the face of this, that we are, you know, because we have nothing to do with where it came from. We have nothing to do with really where it's impacted like the most. This isn't our country really at the end of the day. So, I mean, if this is us being impacted by, you know, this is how the system's supposed to work. Everybody's like, the system's failing. I'm like, the system was never supposed to act like this. Like, like how you think it was. Like, that's why people were trying to get it changed. <laughs> It's because it fails. It fails. Capitalism fails the better part of everybody on this earth, including here in America. Um, the, the form that we practice of capital, capitalism here has failed the better part of people on this planet, including in this country where we use the vast majority of the resources on earth, but can't somehow respond to a basic you know, illness, like if it was so basic, like how comes, how come everyone's getting it? And like, we have all these people literally passing away just because they can't get service, not even just the people who should be passing away because they couldn't, their body couldn't handle it, but also people who can't, you know, um, just get, they have to be sharing a ventilator or some absurd nonsense like that. It's, and our states are fighting our states are trying to outbid each other. It's up to the richest state. <laughs> it's up to the state willing to throw it all in. Or I just don't understand. It's really sad. Um, and it's like I can be okay with some of it because, 
you know, luckily here in California, my governor seems to kind of have his head screwed on straight for this event. And he's also willing to throw California's weight and prestige around a bit to get what he wants. Um, but it's, it's sad for other states, for sure. It's sad for other states who can't keep up with that type of stuff. I don't like envy anybody. And um, yeah, no, uh, I wonder if anybody uh, who follows has gotten their check yet. I haven't gotten mine because... I had closed the account that I used last year. I had it for so long. I had it for so long, you know, and then I didn't, I didn't keep it. And this is the one year I could have actually kept it and it would have been worth it. So go figure. Okay. Go figure. It always works like that. So I'm, I have to wait for a physical anyway. This was just about don't blame yourself. Don't blame your own body. Don't listen to any of this rhetoric because they really have us in this position of vulnerability. And then they're going to really paint it like black people are dying the most. Black people are getting it the most. Black people just have all these underlying health conditions. And it's like, yeah, okay, it's true. Like, I guess if you look at some of those details that they're saying about like, um, maybe us eating things that aren't the healthiest but then again it's again why why do we live in food deserts why can't we all why can't we ever seem to get permits to open certain things but yeah we can always get a permit to open a church like why why do we have why don't we have enough options why don't we have these things that other people have and uh like systemically there's real issues there and then they come back and they and then they try and blame it on us they try and shift it on us like oh it's like look at them what's going on what's going on over here i don't understand i don't understand how the media is going to get to run away with that story and try and um basically subdue us that I have I have a distinct feeling there's going to be certain liberties that are taken away you know what I mean it that you know um I I saw someone aptly put it you know this is going to be like kind of like 9-11 how we referred to times before and after 9-11 flight before and after 9-11 life before and after 9-11 and the COVID's probably going to be much the same life before and after the pandemic it's going to be Very interesting to see what things change. Um, But some of the things that change are likely going to be dangerous. I mean, we've already seen uh, Congress. Somebody was recently talking about trying to have like detainment forever during this, uh, being able to tell like courts that they couldn't go through with certain cases for, for the time being, being able to postpone things. being It's just like trying to take away a whole bunch of liberties just because of the pandemic. We also already have had Trump, you know, me, meanwhile, he can't get enough ventilators and tests. He has been very busy yet again, signing away rights for the environment, signing away people that the EPA is allowing people to just monitor themselves during the pandemic do right do do a good job out here (laughs) like it's just crazy to me that like everything's just kind of getting allowed to go to shit and and like there's just no answers for it but somehow black people are the face of this we got people who are actually in charge actually in charge out here who are supposed to be taking care of shit and I'm to believe like black pe- black people are the face of the pandemic here. But I told you guys, we, we do have to be careful because the, the racism is fierce when there's nothing going on, when they should be happy as hell, when everything is fine and fucking dandy. They got medical racism. They've got real racism like out in the streets. They've got racism. So it doesn't surprise me that we're, we're running into issues, especially when there's short supply. You know, they're they're making choices and their choices typically aren't very sympathetic to us. Typically, they think we look fine. We look great. We look healthy. We look fine and dandy right up until we breathe our last breath. And then, oh, damn, like they just passed on me. And we all have to accept it, you know, because they just don't see the same sympathy. They don't see it. So, I mean, uh, you know, 
there's there's and it's really hard too i think because you can't have somebody in there that's usually the key is you have to have an advocate right that's why a lot of black women have started bringing in doulas to their births that's why it's important when you have a family member in the hospital to visit them um in that hospital make sure they see a family presence like within the first week it's super important because they will treat your family member like crap if they think nobody's there for them. And um, that's unfortunately a reality for a lot of people. I did sadly see that mass grave that they have in New York. And like I, I don't know why people post that type of stuff. I guess it was the news, but still it was like a gif. And it just kept playing over and I was like, what is this? I stared at it for way too long. And then I was like, oh my gosh, like I... Those are body bags like these people are getting buried. It was like the gift was just too short. You know what I mean? Like if it had been like 10 seconds longer, it would have made a lot more sense. Or if it had been a still shot, it would have made a lot more sense. But because it was just this really weird three, four, five seconds, I don't know. At any rate. It's sad because, you know, a lot of those people were people of color. A lot of those people, you know, they were they were people who who maybe they did have loved ones but you know it's really hard to because you can't even really visit people like you know how you usually could and then also it's like you can't travel to go visit somebody so like let's say you have somebody on the other side of the country who's getting sick you can't get to that hospital the way you used to be able to you used to be able to just hop on a plane get there in like three days but now they're not letting people travel like that if you travel you can't get things done that you need to get done you know um it puts you at risk it puts everybody else at risk you know I know you can't even like go to the dentist I went to the doctors the other day and that they were asking that stuff and they you know likely would have re given me a new appointment a few days out if I couldn't pass those questions so it's really real out here um and again, so this is just another PSA. It's continuing. Um, it's it's sad. It's sad to watch in real time. Like this whole thing, this whole year politically has been sad. But seeing this response and then seeing the media is is fueling this narrative. And, you know, all it does is serve to fuel more racism and fuel stereotypes and then also scare black people like uh, the doctor was saying that I was talking about at the beginning. Um, she was talking about that, about us being scared into vac vaccinations, us being scared into things that we shouldn't be scared into. And that's what really breaks my heart is I hope that we are not scared into those types of things. Um, you know, let someone else be the guinea pig. <laughs> Let Italy volunteer to be the guinea pigs of this since they're the ones who want to who want to sue for war crimes to China. Let them start out the vaccinations. I don't want to hear anything about Africa, um, Af black Americans, any of us being the starting pack for any of these vaccines. Get them perfectly oriented before you start offering them to us and then we'll decide because I this narrative that's being brought up so that then we end up having it in our communities first and then lo and behold it's another medicine that actually kills people like no nah, I don't like it anyways good morning good day <laughs> and um May your ancestors and spirit guides be with you at every crossroads. I'll see you next video.